and welcome to Stephen University. This week we are discussing Garnet's Universe. Um, well, where do I start? Um, okay, Stephen asks Garnet what she was up to all day and she says, what do you think I did? And then Stephen proceeds to make up some bullshit, which references a lot of video games and anime, and then the episode ends. Uh, it's ultimately a frivolous episode that goes nowhere. And we gain nothing from it. And I forgot how angry this made me the first time I saw it. Chris, how did you feel? <laughs> well, I'd like to start my opinions, Dan, um, by addressing the audience. Is that mm-hmm. all right? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So, um, I a very deliberate decision for both this and our other podcast, Fringe Observers, is that no matter what I feel, I have to be honest about it. Dan's obviously seen both shows before. Mm -hmm. Um, He can lean things a certain way, but my reaction has to be real. I'm very aware from stuff Dan said and the few bits that I've been able to see, because obviously I can't see a lot of feedback um, because of spoilers, Mm -hmm. but I'm very aware of what I have been able to see, that a large portion of the fan base were really enjoying, especially from the point of view where we are in terms of the release schedule now, because obviously we record ahead. Very much enjoying me uh, getting angry and not liking the show. Um, They found that quite appealing. Uh, But in more recent episodes, that has waned and I've become a fan of the show, you might say. Um, So my feedback has been very positive. So on behalf of the last kind of, I don't know, five, six, seven episodes, I would like to say to those people, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that what you got from this podcast changed as my opinion on the show changed. On behalf of this episode, I would like to say to those people, welcome back, old friends. <laughs> um, and then then I'm just going to say nonsensical rubbish for 10 minutes, because if Steven Universe can waste my time, why can't I waste yours? Um, yeah, not a fan. Uh, as listeners of our other podcasts will know, I don't do great when it's like sidetrack episodes anyway. Flashbacks, I don't mind because they add something. But any kind of fantasy episode, I'm just a bit meh on. Um, so I think Dan was fully expecting me <laughs> to be ultimately bored <laughs> and not that bothered by this. I think part of the problem, if we're gonna, if I'm gonna like review it seriously, because I guess I should, um, is that it's not even from Garnet's mind. So if it was Garnet's fantasy, you could go. Or oh, maybe there's shitloads of hints. Maybe you sh- I should digest this. And there probably is some hints in there for future stuff. But fundamentally, it's from Stephen's imagination. So he's got no idea what she's actually been up to. So mm-hmm. I don't know what I'm meant to hook onto or believe. I'm not sure how another character... All it tells me is some vague things about Stephen's psyche that I already knew. Um this episode really, to me at least, doesn't seem to be adding anything. Yeah, um, I, I would 100% agree with that. I, I, I don't. I remember it making me angry the first time I watched it, to be honest with you, and feeling. But then again, less so than this time, because when I watched it the first time, it's 10 minutes, and I go, okay, great, that was silly. Next, like, it was annoying, but fine. It's 10 minutes, so I can move on to the next episode. Um, do you know what I mean? There's not much... Mm. There's, there's, do you know what I mean? There's not much reason for it to be a problem because you just it was 10 minutes of my life do you know what i mean if it was this was a 40 minute show that would be the the opening five 10 minutes yeah. of a show and you could just easily go okay they opened with a weird flashbacky thing that was irrelevant whatever can we move on you'd be annoyed yeah, but you, you don't be if, as angry if, if you don't like the pics are short pics are short it's fine yeah exactly so uh, yeah. and that's because you get a pixar movie following it do you know what i mean <laughs> um so here though in in isolation in this format, where we're watching one every so often, we're not well, with the exception of the last couple actually, which we did record within the same day. Generally speaking, we've done this podcast with a gap between every single episode. Mm-hmm. It's very rare that we would watch multiple ones because that yeah. but the reason we, for those wondering, the reason we don't do that is then because we'd have to record, stop, record, stop because we're committed to Chris not having future information. We don't want a future episode to influence a current episode. So we never want we, we're never going to watch four episodes yeah. and then record four. We're always going to have and to equally, watch one record it, watch one record it because we never want Chris to to be speaking about an episode having already seen the next one. That's never happened yeah. yet and it well actually no. There was a there was a problem once where you saw an episode early because you watched the you watched them in the wrong order but we we sort of got around that that way. But other than yeah, that and we, we, you've never done that. So we're hoping to stick um, to that. 
And for those wondering, we never, we don't make a habit of doing like a Stephen University bombs, if you will, uh, because it does take a surprising amount of energy out of you <laughs> um, to to analyze, to do it that way, and to analyze a show. And we would never want to risk the dip in quality, mm-hmm. but also um, the reactions has to be, as Dan was saying, as as much as equally, you don't want future stuff to inform. Actually, it's dangerous to let too much past stuff inform. So if we if we watch an episode and it's awful, and then watch an episode and it's great, we might be like, "Oh, this episode was so amazing!" But actually, it just looks amazing because you've literally watched it back to back with a crap episode. Yeah, the exactly. best way to get a review of each individual episode mm-hmm. is to watch them separately and truly. And we watch have them and we have watched this in isolation, and I'll I'll say that I, it's made me angrier now than it did the first time. That's for sure. And I think ultimately what it comes down to and the real the source of the issue is that you could have done this episode and learn a little something about Stephen or learn a little something about Garnet in the way she reacts to the story once he's told it. Do you know what I mean? There was there there is a version of this episode that while still ultimately frivolous, you could at least say, Well, I laughed a bit and we got this out of it. But we didn't get anything out of it, and I'll be honest with you. It's probably the, one of the least funny episodes of the show we've it's seen so far. That funny, yeah. It's not that funny. Yeah. No, I mean, it, 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 the funny thing is, the story Stephen tells has some weird twists and turns, but there's no, there's no like, uh, there's no investment in any of that because it's all nonsense. You're immediately not invested when or, it turns out even... that the person you think is the is isn't the villain is the villain, and they, they you know they swap it round. You just like great. This fictional story is surprised me. Do you know what I mean? Like, there's no, there's no in, consequences. There's no, drama, you know, yeah, go on. And I even would have accepted slightly more. There's a version of this episode that's in, you know, um, 3D animation or, you know, um, what's the term? The Toy Story, what is that? That's not free. Is it um, 3D animation? Yeah. But I don't like, mean popping out the screen. I just mean, you know what I mean? Yeah, like computer generated. Computer, computer generated animation. Um you know, and and that's not great, but at least it gives you something visually to look at. This weird half eight bit, half not animation that they dipped in and out of throughout the episode. It was it was so weird. Yeah, I mean, it was it, the thing is, it is a big throw up to anime and video games. In fact, let me quickly list off some of the yeah, references they've made here. I get uh, that, but the, there wasn't on. consistency with it. There wasn't the consistency of that. It's like. It's like they didn't have a budget, had all their episodes, and went right. We need to really just throw something together, uh, but we don't have we don't have much time to 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 pay writers and stuff. But we are able to get Michael Bay to direct it. It's like Michael Bay directed a budget episode of Steven Universe. Like I just don't get it. That's just, yeah. I'm, I'm on your side. I mean, there are, there it is littered with references there, and I, and I will say that for as a as a fan of anime and video games, which you are into neither. Um, I did pick up a lot from it. Obviously, Hopper resembles the frog from Chrono Trigger. Um, Hoppy resembles, uh, is it Usagi? Um, from a show I don't watch, but I have no of Usagi Yoj- Yojimbo. I never can pronounce that right. Um, Steven's outfit um, from Steven's... Uh... No, what am I looking at? I'm reading two different things here. Uh... Oh yeah, the the device that Hopper uses to measure power levels is a Wii U gamepad, uh, which they refer to as a Scouter, which is a Dragon Ball Z reference. The idea of power levels is a Dragon Ball Z re- reference, as is Garnet powering up at the end of Dragon Ball Z reference. Also, the weighted hair is a Dragon Ball Z reference. They end the episode in the style of Pokemon. Um, the uh, Garnet stopping the bomb with her hand is a reference to Akira. Um, I mean, uh, like, I could keep going. The way that Hoppy is introduced with the screen cutting into three parts is a reference to Samurai Jack. Uh, I mean, it just goes on and on. I could, I literally, uh, there's but, hundreds. The, even the the, the, the the trees and stuff in the background, the little faces are references to Mario. Um, yeah, I mean, I could keep going, but... Uh, but the show isn't community. It doesn't just randomly do this. If you tell me that this is the first of many homage episodes to different things, then maybe I'm a little bit more on board. No. Um, it's, it's, but I can, it, I can it quite comfortably tell you now it's not. <laughs> there you go. So it just makes me... Because you'd have begun with that. You'd have been excited and you'd have been, oh, this is their first... This is them dipping their toe into the into the kind of tribute spoof kind of episodes. But it, But it's not. So either it's an experiment gone wrong 
you know, I'm I'm sure we're annoying people because I bet the people that love it love it. Yeah, and, uh, and look, and here's the I thing: is, I I totally get that. If you're really into those things, if you're, re- I mean, and, and that, so actually, I don't even know if this is true because I'm into those things. But it wasn't. It's not enough to just show the trope. You have to be commentating on it. It's. Do you know what I mean? If you're gonna do that sort of thing where you go, okay, here we are, we're gonna homage and like the whole episode's gonna be sort of like a not a spoof, but like a sort of a, an observation of how like an anime plays out. Then you want to be actually making commentary on it, not just copying it. Do you know what I mean? Mm. It's no good to just be. It's like that. It's like that thing the scary movies forgot to do after a while. They actually forgot satire. They just started echoing scenes from movies and then having someone fall over or fart in the middle of them. Do you know what I mean? At a certain point, it's not satire anymore. You're just copying it badly and then having someone fall over. Do you know what I mean? Where and also, and that's kind of what it, this is. It's just like a lot of like references to that stuff, but no real actual commentary on yeah. whether that's good or bad or making that. fun of that or any you know what i mean and, and then so what are you doing then you're just it's just a series of references that's not that that's not characters. an episode of television that or the characters as you said earlier it is ultimately redundant like you could you could have it that steven tells her this story and she in it is really violent and then it cuts to it and she goes is that how you see me like really violent and then the gem she's captured escapes and she recaptures it in a non-violent way because she doesn't like the fact that Stephen sees her that way. Or, the, or, she got ca- the- or she shows Stephen how it actually happened and it was non-violent rather than it escape. Because if it escapes, then... Yeah. It, yeah. There's a, yeah your Even point that. still stands, though. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Yeah. Even that, which is simpler, yeah. is still better. It just... Yeah. I, on the back of next to... And I know I'm slightly doing what we said we try not to do. But on the on the back of so many great episodes recently, yes. and even last week's, which wasn't great but wasn't offensive, this yes. just comes across as really like out of place. And it's odd. To, to remind me, because we we did a couple in the last in the last session, the very last one was fusion cuisine, wasn't it? And we we liked the episode, mm. but on the but there were, there was a small we had the small wrinkle of we just didn't really see that as the necessarily the most appropriate way. We couldn't decide if it was either genius to subvert your expectations to introduce Alexandrite that way, or if it was actually just bad writing <laughs> and that she deserved yeah. a more epic yeah, yeah. introduction. <laughs> if memory serves, we couldn't decide. So that episode had a f- had flaws, but ultimately I think we came out with a relatively positive view because at least the content was there. You know, we laughed, we liked the character stuff. Do you know what I mean? There's a lot of this, there was enough there to hold yeah. you. Whereas with this, I literally got very little out of this. And at the very least an episode of steven universe is usually capable of making me laugh um uh, even when nothing else is working and and i'm not even sure i really laughed at this no so i was i was genuinely bored by it yeah i i felt that too like at a certain point in the episode i was i felt my attention drifting and i had to resist the urge to pick up my phone and play um like at the moment what am i playing at the moment what am i i've got like i i have a habit of having a phone game of some description that distracts me um and I go through a cycle of like getting addicted to them, and they just they just fill in gaps when I'm bored. Oh yeah, I'm playing Dragon Ball Z Dokkan Battle at the moment, which is a great game. If you're not playing that, you should be. Great well, shout, it's addictive. But uh, you know, uh, but I didn't. I I felt the urge to pick it up, but didn't for the sake of the podcast. But I was very close because it. You're right. It was yeah. kind of dull. Um, the only there thing you go. that well, there, there was one other thing. Oh yeah. Um, so. One other thing I want to bring up very quickly is just the voice acting was was cool. So basically, the Hopper was voiced by the uh, DD uh, Mega. Ma- Ma- I can never pronounce his name. I always, always I feel bad about this. Uh, Magno Hall, pronounced that wrong probably. She's Pearl usually. She voiced Hopper, and Hoppy yeah. um, was voiced by um, Michaela Dietz, who's Amethyst. Um, and I will say they sort of almost role reversed those sort of personality traits. I was just about to um, say that. That's my little bit of I trivia, think... but you got there. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, well, n- yeah. No, I noticed that because I was just looking for things to. Because I was like, well, maybe there's hints or there's stuff that you need to grab hold of. Yeah. So I was just looking for shit, and all I found was that they. It was clearly them voicing the characters, but they were sort of voicing the the other kind of character, mm-hmm. which is cool. And uh, the fox, uh, the fox man was voiced by uh, Matthew uh, Moy, who voices Lars. And of course, no, that one I didn't get. Uh, yeah, no, he's 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 doing a good job of disguising his Larsiness in that, isn't he? Um, mm. And 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 Zachary Steele, who voices Ronaldo, voiced Ringo, who is a Ronaldo facsimile. So it didn't that wasn't particularly clever. Um, the other thing from this episode that's worth noting is just a little bit of trivia. Um, the, the the narration at the end of the story 
was uh, Zach Coll- uh, Callison, who's Stephen's voice actor. That's his normal voice when he's not putting... Because he really puts on the Stephen voice. He said, oh, honestly, cool. when he talks... I swear, I saw him. At, um, well, I saw him. I watched uh, some footage from uh, Momocon, I think it's called, which is like uh, I don't even know what that convention is. But that Steven Universe had two different panels there, and he was on both of them. And um, he, he he sounds like Justin Bieber when he talks. Very very disconcerting. And uh, but you know, less like, less, less, less of just, a dick. You know, <laughs> it sounded like older Steven to me. I was just like, this is weird. Why is it being voiced? <laughs> like, yeah, you know. but that's that's his normal voice. Um, uh, back at that point, but now his voice is even more more matured. So when he goes into Steven voice now, it is very very. It's it's really different. It's night and day. So it's re- it's re- it's really cool. And then the last bit, of, look, I say trivia, but of thing worth noting in this episode was this is where the co- where they coined the phrase Stephen Bomb. So you may know because it's been brought up previously, Chris. Yes. Um, that, yeah, yeah. I did see that. I did notice that. Yeah, because uh, yeah, they've referred to um, whenever Cartoon Network it burns off five episodes at once in a week because they're terrible at scheduling and they pretend it's like a treat. Because they don't know how else to market it, they call that a Stephen bomb. Um, and we're on Stephen bomb. I don't know, God knows how many now, six or seven or something. Um, so yeah, we've we've had you know bursts of episodes, and they and they've even had Stephen bombs now where all the, where the plots actually lead through. So there's a, yeah, there's, a, there's a hook through all five episodes. That's one. So not they're not one story, but they sort of either lead through something or they connect in some way um in different ways depending on the bomb but yeah uh so that's that's interesting um so yeah that's about it other than when they said the word onion an image of onion the character showed up which was okay i suppose i don't know there wasn't a lot to get out of this episode was there no but i think we've suitably ranted yeah it's not very good um and i'm sorry if you thought it was because i feel like you'll probably be very upset that we've we've not liked it uh, you know what throw a comment down below if you can if you can express we I, I would be fascinated to read um any comments from anyone who really likes this episode just to get a feel for what why it is that we're what it is we're missing um because it'll i'm, be, sh- I'm sure this episode that loves will have its fans it would be someone that loves the anime references someone that has seen deeper references into the wider mythology of the show um, or someone that you know really doesn't mind essence, you know, descents into madness as long as that it's entertaining and and people have different yardsticks for that. So I get it, like that's fine, and I don't, you know, I'm not going to say you're wrong for that. It's just uh, it's not my. But there's opinion. another there's another episode that somebody could criticize for that for just like descending into madness, irrelevant madness. There's an episode that's arguably not even canon coming up. With a with a sort of similar direction, but I love that one. I say it's not coming up; it's 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 distant future. But I love that episode because it is so it's it's good fun. Like I enjoy mm. it, even though I know it's irrelevant. I'm I laugh at it and I find it s- silly fun. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's actually like commentating on the show itself, and um, and it has a purpose. I really get something out of it. I, mm. I don't get anything out of this, so I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, this wasn't this wasn't fun. No. Anywho, yeah. um, that's everything for this week. We'll, uh, oh, well, we'll we'll see you obviously ne- for the next episode, which is Watermelon Stephen. You want to get us on Twitter? It's at uh, Dan Doolan and at Chris Billingham with two M's. Excuse me. Oh, I burped as I said that, Chris. That was weird and gross. Billingham with two M's because that's how Chris likes it. Yep. Also, someone else already had Chris Billingham. I'm guessing. <laughs> yep. And I regret it because, like, I didn't realise that it would be said like 200 times on various podcasts. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, I can't yeah. change it now because well, well, it's said I, I 200 that, times well, on various podcasts. I, well, I wish that Twitter had a one letter longer limit on your username because then we wouldn't have to have nothing but static without the G as our other Twitter handle. Um, because how many times have I had to say nothing but static without the G? Uh, and it's yeah. also uh, yeah. mail at nothing with with the G at static.co.uk if you want to email us obviously comments can also go on on the YouTube channel below if you'd like to yell at us or say something uh, horribly racist again um, um, be patient <laughs> if uh, we take a while getting back to you because only Dan can respond yeah. so. uh, at a certain point I may have to just put up a thing that says look we will we, we get a lot of feedback I will I will respond to to, to, yeah. to, 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 to just a select few and we are reading them all even if we're not hey. responding to them all you know as I say that like if I could respond I would Probably, yeah, you, you would probably still be you doing it. Yeah, it would be. <laughs> All right, that's everything for this week. I've been Dan Doolan. I've been Chris Billingham. And we'll see you next time as we discuss Watermelon Stephen. Watermelon Stephen.